in this episode a really quick tutorial on structs and data tables. Hey guys, welcome to today's episode, and today it's a quick overview of data tables. And anytime you have a variety of a type of actor that you want to use in your game, most likely the right way to store that data is with a data table. You can think of a data table as a simple spreadsheet with individual rows for each actor, and then your columns are your data points, your variables within each actor. But the data table itself really doesn't have a direct connection to anything within Unreal Engine or Blueprints, so we need some intermediary structure. We need a structure that can actually bring the data from the data table integrate that in a way that Unreal Engine understands. And that's aptly titled a structure, or struct for short. So only these two concepts today for a very quick episode. So let's get to it. All right, so to start today, we're going to create the struct, and that's going to define the structure of the data table, of the data that we want to store. So we're going to do that by going to Content Drawer, Content, we're going to go into the Blueprints folder, and I'm going to create a new folder here for data tables, because we're only going to use structs in the context of data tables, so we can create a folder for that. So we'll right-click from here, and under Blueprints, we'll see at the very last option, Structure. And I'm just going to name this ST for Structure, Gameplay, Ability, Pickup, because that's what the structure is going to define, what variables are part of our gameplay ability pickup data table. So we'll go into that. And so now we need to define all those different variables. So this first variable here, I'm going to change this to be the Niagara system display. And where I'm getting this from, let me just show you this. So if we come over to any of our gameplay ability pickups, or really any actor, you can do this for any actor. And you can look at all of your exposed variables right here, because each of our exposed variables is what we're going to use in the data table. So each of these is going to have the same exact structure match right here. So this Niagara system display, it has to be of type Niagara system. This one right here, object reference. And if you're not sure what types these are, you can actually go into the actor, so the gameplay ability pickup, and I'm just going to maximize that. So that's each of these right here. I just did this ahead of time, so I know exactly what the structures are, and we're all set. So we're going to do another variable, and this one is going to be our ability icon. And that correlates to this right here. So that's going to be a texture 2D, texture 2D object reference. Add variable, next one's going to be our ability type. And this is going to be an enum that we set up, I think, all the way back in episode 26. So gameplay ability type, this one right here. Next one is going to be intensity. And this is a simple float variable. Intensity, and change this over to float. Then we get to our ability primary Niagara system. So ability primary Niagara system. And that's also going to be a type Niagara system. This right here, object reference. And last but not least, we have one more. We have how the gameplay ability is used. How gameplay ability is used. And that's the second enum that we started in episode 26, but we ended up changing the name of that along the way. All right, so now we have our structure. We have how each of these data points is going to be used, and they're going to correlate with each of these, but we're really not going to get into that until next episode when we do the spawner. But now that we have this, so we can exit out of this, go back to our content drawer, right click, and we're gonna go under miscellaneous, and this option right here, data table. And now we have to pick the row structure. We have to tell the data table, okay, what structure are you using to structure the data? And if we come down, we can find our ST gameplay ability pickup that we just created, and okay. And I can name this DT Gameplay Ability Pickups. And we'll go into that. And then I can maximize this so we can see the full range of each of these columns. And actually, I'm just going to make them a little bit wider. So each line is an individual gameplay ability pickup. So we can go add a new row to the data table. And what we want to do here, I'll just make this a little bit smaller. So it doesn't have to be so small, so something like that. We want to find each of our types of gameplay ability pickups in the world. So we'll start with our fireball right here. So row name, instead of new row, I'm going to right click, we're going to rename and we'll call it fireball. In this row name, just think of it as a common identifier for identifying that row. And we're going to use that in blueprints by the end of the episode. All right, so then we just need to copy whatever we've got for our pickup over here. So I'm going to use NS fire fireball underscore pickup. And then this one, I'll just come and do this one simultaneously, or right after, so fireball with UP. Ability icon is gonna be our fireball. Ability type, fire, intensity 100. How gameplay ability is used, single cast. Save this, next row, add a row. And let's look for our next gameplay ability pickup. Probably the quickest thing is we can come over to our shoreline where we have all three. And you could also do the torch fire effect where you're holding a torch fire in your hand. I'm not going to use it for this simply because it's a display only effect and it's not gonna have any effect in terms of gameplay. So we'll go on to our air ability here. First thing, I'm going to rename this. This is going to be air speed jump boost. Niagara system display is NS small cloud base. This one is NS air channel with UP. Air channel with UP. 
ability icon is air ability channel icon ability type is air intensity is 100 and how gameplay ability is used is channel save that then onto our flamethrower last but not least so add a new row rename the row this is going to be fire flamethrower i'm just putting fire in front of it just so we know which of the ability types it's using niagara system so we can just search for flamethrower see what we get choose the pickup and then over here we do the same thing flamethrower with up it's going to be a channel this is also going to be intensity 100 ability icon flamethrower there we go save that so we've got the start of our data table we have our three abilities so save this and i'll exit out of this and now let's actually start the spawner that we're going to create in earnest next episode but i want to show you just the basics of how to get a data table integrated with blueprints so we're going to go back to the content drawer back to the blueprints folder i'm going to create a new folder for spawners and we'll go into that and we'll right click we'll create a new blueprint class and the parent class is going to be actor and we're going to call this bp actor spawner basic because i want this to be a generalized actor spawner we can use it for any type of actor but we're going to start with gameplay abilities next episode so we'll go into this and i'll navigate over to the event graph and the very first thing we're going to do actually i can delete out event actor begin overlap and event tick we're going to create a new variable and we're going to call it the data table for spawning because for this variable we're going to make it instance editable and exposed on spawn and that way we can pass a data table into this actor and then that's what the spawner is going to use to actually figure out what is it spawning so it's going to be of type if we search for data table and this one right here, object reference. So compile and save this. And if we come over a little bit to the right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a reference to our data table for spawning. And from here, we're gonna get the data table row names. So this is how you can get those row names, however many rows you have. And as you can see, it returns an array. Connect this up. And so from this, we can say, okay, if we wanna spawn a random element from the data table, like any one of those rows, well, we can just get a random array item from the array. And then we can get another reference to our data table for spawning. And from this, we could say, get data table row. And it's this one right here under utilities, get data table row and connect this up here and this up here. And then when we get that data table row, then from here, we could say break and break ST gameplay ability pickup right there. And that's gonna have all the individual data elements, part of our struct, part of our data table. So if a row is found from our data table, then it's gonna do this row found right here. So we could do something like spawn actor from class. And then when we spawn actor from class, that's where we would take all of our exposed parameters and hook it up right here. And if a row isn't found, well, we could just do a simple print string and maybe something like no row, row. But all of this stuff right here, that's what we're going to save for the next episode. So that concludes this really quick episode, but the whole reason we made this data table is so that we could use it for a spawner next episode. So we're setting up a very simple gameplay ability spawner on begin play, just spawns gameplay abilities over a few ticks across our entire level, really as many as you want. So I hope to see you there.